welcome back uh, to my channel this is Justina uh, with Justina Tea Handmade in this video I'm gonna walk you through uh, how to sew in the daisy fanny pack um, this pattern has been released for some time now uh, I had uh, the multiple requests uh, to create a video so here I am creating the video tutorial for you uh, this pattern comes with the full uh, written instructions, um, so you don't need the uh, video uh, tutorial, but uh, if that's something you prefer, um, it's uh, here for you. Uh, also, this pattern as created uh, features uh, this version of the fanny pack, which includes a woven cotton and a waterproof canvas. When you uh, click on the link to the Etsy store, you're gonna be able to review all the supplies uh, needed to complete the project as is. Uh, in today's video, I decided to uh, put a little spin on the uh, pattern. Uh, as you can see, this version is uh, a little larger. All I did to achieve that, it's just printing the uh, printable pattern templates at the 110 percent and then um, you're gonna uh, get this uh, larger bag just to show you in comparison uh, it's it's quite larger so if you uh, if you are looking for a smaller funny pack that is great for short walks uh, or dog walks uh, you can make the original size or if you are looking for a bag that it's a little larger, you can uh, print out the pattern at 110% and just make yourself a bit uh, bigger bag. And like I said, um, this tutorial serves as a support uh, for the written instructions that are included in the pattern. Uh, and uh, you can refer uh, to this video to create your bag or uh, you can follow the instructions in the pattern. Uh, in this uh, bag, I also um, decided to use the site release buckle. Uh, in the instructions, uh, you're gonna have the option to create a strap uh, using a regular uh, back making hardware. Uh, just to quick show you, the back has two compartments. So you have the front uh, packet and the main. Uh, packet of the bag. Uh, this bag uh, features a nice flat uh, design so it doesn't create much of a bulk around your uh, body especially if you're gonna wear it as a uh, waist bag or a fanny bag uh, but it's also a great option to wear it as a crossbody bag or even as a sling um, backpack. Um, if you are not yet a subscriber to my channel, please make sure to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. This way you're going to be notified every time a new video is released. Uh, and often I offer a discount codes uh, that are available and active for a week from the release of a new video. So that's something you should uh, keep in mind. If you have any questions about the pattern uh, or anything that I show you in the video or you would like to um, I would, or you would like me to share the source of my supplies, uh, please leave a comment in the description box below. You can also reach out to me on my social media and the Facebook group uh, link and the Instagram link are listed in the description below. And now, if you would like to see me creating this version of the Daisy Fanny Pack, please keep watching. To start our project, we're gonna cut all our pattern pieces and prep uh, most of our supplies. Uh, since, um, since I'm using vinyl for the accent fabrics, uh, I'm not gonna be interfacing it. Um, uh, if you are using some thin material like uh, woven cotton for the accent fabric, just make sure you follow the directions for the interfacing uh, of your project. So here I'm just gonna run really quick through my pattern pieces. So this is panel A. I cut the accent panel and the lining panel. Panel E is just one lining. Panel F is the biggest lining. Then we have panel B, which is the uh, upper accent panel. Uh, 
panel D, which are our sides. So you just want to make sure you're going to cut them on mirror, which means uh, one this way and one that way. So you're going to place the pattern right side up. And then to cut the second one, you're going to flip the pattern to create a mirror image. And our panel C, which is uh, another aligning panel. You can notice that I'm missing panel G, which is the back of the back panel. Um, I'm gonna follow my own advice that I added in the pattern. Uh, I'm gonna use my finished front panel to cut out my uh, back panel. Um, this will ensure that my uh, front panel and back panel are exactly the same size. Uh, I advise you to do the same thing, uh, especially if you are uh, playing with the size of the bag. Um, this way, if your seam allowances are a little bit off or um, you're making any changes to, uh, to any uh, of the uh, panel pieces, then when you put your front panel all together, you have a perfect template to cut out uh, the back of the back panel. Uh, so that's all my fabric pieces. Then I'm gonna uh, need two zippers and two zipper pulls, uh, coordinating thread. This is uh, Gutterman Mera 70 polyester thread. Uh, on this bag, I'm gonna be using the side release clasp. Uh, the pattern itself shows you how to use the regular back hardware with the D-rings and swivel clasp, but uh, this one I wanna uh, use this uh, side release clasp and I'm going to be using um, some webbing tape for my strap. I haven't decided on, on the color just yet so I may be using this pink one or I may be using this uh, navy blue. This I'll just see how it comes together what I think looks best. Also I'm going to be using some rivets. Um, this is optional. The rivets give a little bit strength to your strap uh, and I just like the look so I'm gonna be using some. So those are our supplies um, and our cuts. Now we can start our project. So we're gonna start our project with panel A. So you're gonna grab the um, accent uh, fabric, the outer accent fabric panel A. And if you're using um, a material that needs to be interfaced, just make sure it's interfaced before you move on. Then you're gonna take one of the zipper tapes um, and you're gonna place it teeth side down. And make sure it's centered on your project. And also a note, uh, I'm not putting my uh, zipper pull on just yet. I like to work with the zipper pull off. But if that's something that makes you uncomfortable, just make sure you insert your zipper pull before you start uh, attaching the zipper to the project. So once again, we're going to center our zipper tape on the straight edge of the panel A, uh, teeth side down. Um, if you feel more comfortable basting your zipper before you attach your lining, you can do that. So you will just baste the zipper with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Or if you are comfortable uh, with attaching those two panels at the same time, you're just going to place uh, panel A lining right sides together with the accent panel, covering the zipper tape and making sure it aligns perfectly with the um, accent panel A and you're gonna clip those uh, three elements together so you have your accent fabric which is the outer fabric you have your zipper teeth side down and your lining uh, wrong side up and now when you have that ready you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna uh, sew along the straight edge to attach the zipper the zipper is now sewn in. Now I'm going to open the project and make sure I'm going to finger press it well on the back and on the front. 
because I'm using vinyl, I can't really uh, press the front panel uh, with the iron, so that's why I'm finger pressing it. When I have my unit prepped like this, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along this edge uh, with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that my unit is top stitched, uh, I'm gonna move on to attaching my upper accent panel. So I'm gonna take the panel B and lining panel C. And first I'm gonna place a panel B on top of the zipper tape, making sure it's centered and just temporarily clip it to the zipper tape. After my panel B uh, is temporarily clipped to my zipper tape, I'm gonna take the lining panel C, place it right side up on the table, and now align the top edge uh, of the panel with the edge of panel B. Now I'm gonna secure that in place. We wanna make sure that both lining panels are right sides together and that our accent panel B is right side together with the accent panel A. And now that we have our unit prep like this, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew along this edge to attach panel B and panel C. After our panel B and C are sewn in to the other edge of the zipper tape, you're gonna uh, take the panel B and fold it over the seam allowance and you're gonna uh, finger press it or you can press it with the iron depending on the fabric you're using. You're gonna make sure that panel C lies flat uh, behind our panel A and when you have your unit prepped like this, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along this edge with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance. After our panel B is top stitch, uh, we're gonna now work on attaching uh, our sec second zipper. Uh, again, I'm working with the zipper without the zipper pull on, but if that's something that you're not comfortable with, just make sure you put your zipper pull on right now. So what we want to do, we want to mark the center of the zipper. We want to mark the center of panel B. And I'm just inserting the pin in a way that's not going to really pierce my vinyl. And I'm gonna take my lining panel E and I'm gonna fold it in half and finger press it to make a crease so I know where the midpoint is. When I have all my elements uh, marked with the central mark, uh, I'm gonna start attaching my zipper. So I'm gonna place my zipper, making sure it's in the center I want to make sure that I'm attaching the zipper to the lining panel, teeth side up, and then I'm going to take my unit and I'm going to make sure that I'm referring to the center mark and I'm going to place it along the edge of the zipper. Now I can secure that in place. Remove my marks. And now I want to make sure that I'm going to mark at 3 8 of an inch on each side. And, and that's going to be the mark where our seam will start and end. So you want to make sure when you take this to the machine that when you're going to be sewing the zipper uh, tape on and the lining panel onto the panel B, you're going to be sewing only from the 3 8 mark 
up to the 3 8 mark on this side and make sure to back stitch uh, on the beginning and on the end of the seam now uh, you're gonna flip your project right side up and you're gonna finger press it again and again you want to make sure that you mark the 3 8 mark from the edge of your panel and when you have uh, your unit prepped like this you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch only from the 3 8 of an inch mark to the another 3 8 of an inch mark with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance after the upper part of the panel b is top stitched uh, we're gonna work on attaching our side panels but just a note make sure you put uh, your zipper pulls on at this point um, because we're gonna be closing now uh, the zipper tape uh, I like my zipper to close going from the right to the left uh, if that's not your preference feel free to do it the other way around uh, I like it this way so my uh, two zippers are closing when pulled to the left so now we're gonna take our unit and we're gonna fold our lining panel at the point of the stitch and secure that do the same thing on the other side we just want to make sure that the lining panels will stay out of the way of the next seam so now that we have our unit prepped like this on the back we're gonna place it right side up again take our panels d and uh, attach them to each side so when you're attaching it you want to make sure that um, this little corner picks up and it um, aligns with the zipper tape at the point where the seam starts so it should be uh, on about 3 8 of an inch and it should have a little corner on the bottom so when we sew it we are actually gonna uh, continue the seam up to this little corner that would give us a consistent panel when you have your unit prepped like this you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to sew along those two edges uh, with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance making sure that this lining panel stays out of the way of the seam now that our side panels are sewn in i'm gonna trim all the access zipper and any little extras And now, still keeping my lining panel out of the way, I'm gonna, again, finger press uh, my panels out. You can use clips to keep it in place. And when I have this uh, prepped like this I'm gonna take it back to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along those two edges with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance making sure this lining panels is still out of the way of the seam now that you have your uh, side panels top stitch um, just to finish up uh, the construction of the front panel we just have to attach the second lining panel so you want to make sure now your lining um, can be uh, unfolded and placed in a final position you're gonna take a lining panel panel F and you're gonna place it right sides together with the uh, other lining panel making sure it's nice and centered 
on the top edge of your unit and secure that with clips. Now you're gonna take the uh, unit to the machine and you're gonna base the lining panel onto your unit with the 1 8 of an inch uh, seam allowance. Now my lining is based in place. Now I'm gonna uh, work on cleaning up my front unit. I just wanna make sure that all the edges are nice and straight and all the uh, panels, uh, edges align per perfectly. And like I said on the beginning, uh, now that our front panel is prepped, we're gonna use that front panel as a template to cut our uh, back of the back panel. And uh, this way you can see that if you have a little bit of a shifting or um, your seam allowances maybe weren't perfect, uh, you're gonna be able to just uh, clean up your front panel and use that as the template for the back and both uh, will fit uh, perfectly this way. So now uh, I'm gonna use uh, my panel to cut the back of the back. And just like that, I have two perfect um, panels. So I know they're gonna fit to each other perfectly. So before we uh, put together our front and our back panel, uh, we have to work on our strap. So I decided to um, go with the navy blue webbing. I think it's nice and um, with the pink, I think it would be too much pink. I'm gonna take my buckle and I'm gonna separate it. This is the part that has the adjustable bar. So I'm gonna put that aside and uh, I'm gonna thread this one onto my short webbing strap that's gonna be attached to the right side. Um, you can do it the other way around, whatever suits you. I like, uh, I want to make um, this strap a little longer so when i'm wearing this as kind of like a sling uh, backpack uh, uh, it's uh, it's gonna be more accessible for me on my shoulder so i'm gonna make this strap a little longer this uh, webbing tape uh, it's 15 inches in length uh, so i'm gonna thread my buckle part on and i know that this is the front part so i want to flip it over and i want to attach the webbing in the middle of uh, this angled cut i'm gonna give it about half an inch to three-fourth of an inch overhang and clip it in place so when it's sewn in, it's gonna be the right side up. Uh, for the other side, I pre-cut about 50 inches of webbing and I'm just gonna attach it one end uh, to it because uh, when my project is done, then I'm gonna thread my uh, release uh, part of the buckle onto it. So I'm gonna center it making sure I have some overhang so I can secure that with rivets. And I'm gonna take this to the machine and I'm gonna base uh, the webbing tape uh, onto my front panel. Now that my webbing is based to my front panel, I'm gonna take my back panel, I'm gonna place it uh, right sides together and clip it to the top edge of my project.
uh, I'm gonna now take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew along this edge uh, to attach my panel. Don't sew all around just yet, just sew the top edge. Also, if that's something you wanna do, at the same time, you can baste the bottom of the small packet lining to your outer uh, panel. So now take your project to the machine, making sure that your webbing is out of the way of your seam. So the top edge of your project. Now that the top edge is sewn, you're gonna open your project. You're gonna pull the lining over. Make sure you're gonna finger press it and you're gonna take it back to the machine, making sure your lining is nice and flat behind the back panel. You're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along this edge, but only where the zipper is. You're gonna start your top stitching where um, this top stitching seam began and carry it over up to the point where this top stitching is. So make sure you're gonna back stitch on the beginning and on the end of this seam. Now that you have this part top stitch, you're gonna open the project and you're gonna align those uh, two main lining panels together and clip or pin. When you have the lining panels pinned, make sure to mark an opening in the bottom of the uh, lining. That's gonna be our turning opening. And now um, you're gonna take this to the machine and you're gonna uh, sew the lining. Make sure that the outer panel is out of the way of the seam. So you're gonna be sewing up to the a marked pin and again uh, from the marked pin to the top edge making sure you are leaving this turning hole uh, answer. I sewn my lining and I left an opening here. I just want to say that when you are uh, sewing your lining just make sure that the lining from the uh, first lining panel uh, stays folded so you have nice finish uh, edges inside all right so we are almost finished now uh, all that left to do is to complete sewing our outer panels so you're gonna place your project um, right sides together and align all, uh, all edges all around. Make sure your lining stays out of the way of the seam. When you have your unit prepped like this, you wanna make sure that your main lining is nice and free. It's not clipped to the panel. Uh, and you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna continue the seam all around. You wanna make sure you're gonna backstitch well. You can even start the seam uh, enforcing um, this little corner on the top of your project and then continue the seam all the way to the other end and then you can come back uh, half an inch uh, onto the main uh, seam to make sure that nothing will um, unravel when we are using our uh, back. Now that my project is sewn 
all the way around and as you can see because my vinyl is pretty thick i decided to run two row of stitches just very close to each other to just enforce uh, the seam so it's not gonna uh, the thread is not gonna pick through uh, so now we have to prep our seam allowance before we turn our project right side out first we're gonna uh, cut out those little corners and then we're gonna uh, cut the curved edge uh, with our pinking shears if you don't have pinking shears you can just uh, make uh, small snips all around uh, I would actually trim the seam allowance to not more than one fourth of an inch and then uh, clip the seam allowance along the uh, curved edge making sure I'm not cutting any stitches so let's do that And now our project is ready to be turned right side out. Now that your project is uh, right side out, everything is um, nicely pushed out, all the seams. You can apply a little bit of heat on the vinyl. Just make sure you're gonna use like a double uh, layer of pressing cloth and be very, very delicate. Just uh, do a quick uh, test first. Uh, alternatively, you can top stitch your uh, project um, if that's something you would like and if that's something your machine uh, can handle uh, i'm just gonna apply a little heat on my seam to make sure i'll set it uh, in place so i apply the little heat to my seam and it seems to work uh, perfectly fine so uh, i'm happy how it how it's looking and you can see that um, it just just works you don't uh, you just have to be careful making sure you're not overheating your uh, vinyl uh, so now that we have uh, that done we're gonna finish up our lining so you want to pull the lining out of your bag fold the raw edges inside making sure you can make a rounded seam as much as possible but i wouldn't worry too much because nobody will see it inside of your bag and when you have your lining prep you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along the opening with uh, 1 8 or 1 16th of an inch. Uh, you wanna make sure you are catching both sides. So if you are uncomfortable with a, a small seam, like 1 16th, just increase your seam allowance to uh, 1 8 of an inch. My lining is now closed. I'm gonna place it inside of my bag, making sure it goes to the bottom now i can zip it up and work on the finishing touches so i'm gonna uh, attach two rivets on each side to hold my webbing 
um, this is optional too if you uh, if you feel your webbing is secure enough or you don't like the look of the rivets you don't have to do that but I I want to do it so I'm just gonna um, install two rivets on each side And now I want to make sure that my buckle stays in place, so I'm going to install two rivets on the webbing tape as well. Now it's nice and secure. Now I'm gonna attach the other side of the buckle. Uh, I also added a little uh, belt loop uh, to hold my loose end of my webbing. This is just a, a one inch uh, strap of uh, vinyl that I folded in half, top stitch on both ends and just uh, put together with a rivet. So now I'm gonna thread my uh, buckle. So I'm gonna put it from the top, loop it over the middle bar. And this way the webbing is secured. Now I'm gonna put the other end of the webbing through my belt loop make sure everything looks correct that my webbing is not twisted and now I can finish up the other end of my webbing with rivets I'm just gonna fold the end over and install two rivets to finish up the other end of my strap. The project is now uh, all done and the back is ready to use. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that you're gonna uh, give the project a go. The link to the pattern is in the description box below. Please make sure to share your creations with me on my social media. The Facebook group and the Instagram links are also in the description box below. If you have uh, any questions about the uh, product itself or the pattern, please feel free to reach out to me. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section or you can always uh, contact me on social media. Till the next time.